YouTube. We are back. Thankfully, this finally came in. Here it is. Bam! We have the Assassin's Creed Starter Kit. Now, as you guys know, here on the channel, we've been doing a lot of openings. I'm not really a starter anymore, but it's always nice to buy some of these products every now and then just to see what we're uh, what we're getting, what we're giving to the new people, right? So I wanted to see what this was. Oh, so it's Assassin's Creed, so I kind of wanted to buy it anyway. Um, but, so, we're, I want to open this up and see, is this good for starters? Is this an actual good product for starting new players? Um, so we get two decks in it. There we go. Two ready decks, one play guide, and two deck boxes. So, like I said, my main question with this was, uh, is this going to be any good for starters? Is this not going to be good for starters? Is this a fun product for collectors, for old, for old vets? You know, is this just something that we would uh, like to have more of? I know that we are getting one with Bloomboro, which is kind of in exciting, too. And yes, I have already pre-ordered that one. Um, so, with that being said, bam. Okay. Um, interesting. I thought this was going to be like a box, not just a cutout. Because there was that, and then that. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool little cutout sort of thing. Um, so, we get the normal boxes here. Oh, actually, this one's kind of nice. I like this one, because this one actually has the... Does it have both of them? Yes, it does. So, we have an Ezio deck, and we have an Ivor deck. And, this could have been the same with the uh, with the Lord of the Rings one, because that's the last one that I remember uh, us getting, anyway, was that uh, the boxes may have had them on there, but I don't remember them do having them on there. So, kind of nice. Let me get this so you guys can actually see this real quick. There. So, Ezio there, and then this one, I haven't put together yet, Ivor. So that's the two decks. We have an Ezio deck, we have a Demir Ezio deck, and a Boros Ivor deck. So I'm intrigued to see um, how the two decks actually look. That's what we're going to look at here in a second. Um, but we do have this fancy starter kit play guide. Uh, welcome to Magic, there's your decks, there's the color spectrum. Uh, telling you what everyone does, which is kind of nice. Nice little starter thing, an example play area. Okay. I was going to say, it would be, it'd be interesting to get a playmat. Because I know a lot of other card games have playmats they give in their starter, like decks, for instance. Um, it would be interesting how Magic would do a starter deck. Um, having a dice in this would have been kind of cool, honestly. Um, with it being a starter kit, having a dice would have been nice. Uh, starting a tabletop game, the area... Uh, game actions, uh, combat, so it kind of gives you a little bit of everything. How to read a magic card, that's always a nice a nice one for um, people just starting out. How do you read this? Because I don't know, that sort of thing. Um, name, creature type, uh, sorceries, text, power, toughness, expansion symbols... Parts of the turn, very weird that's right at the end of this, um, but learn to play magic. Facts and questions. So there we go. So, with that being said, there's that, there's that. Let's take a look at the decks, see what we actually got. I'm going to open up the Ivar one first, because this is the one that is uh, the intriguing one to me. Out of the two of them, um, I kind of want to see the Ezio one more. That's why we're going to open up this one first. Um, but like I said, my biggest question is this. Is, is this a decent product for new people right if you're new to magic is actually buying a starter kit that good the other thing that's interesting with this is the starter kits are 60 card decks they're regular decks like they're not they're not commander they're just regular 60 card decks so already with where magic is i would say and it'd be tough to do starter kits probably should be commander just because most people play commander i feel like but all right, so we have Ivor, Battle Ready, though. The main, the main, the main, and the main one in this. Um, Excarpment Fortress. Okay, so rare. Other creatures gain plus one, plus zero. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. Three, five, Defender with Reach. All right, okay. And then we have Cert, the Fiery Jotun. It's just, oh, which is interesting. It's the Fiery uh, Jotun. And most Jotuns are ice, so... Um, Whenever, it, whenever you cast a Historic Spell, Cert deals 3 damage to any target. 5-5, five, five, 2 red, 3 colorless with Trample. Solid card. Raven Clan War Axe. Okay, I wasn't sure like what we were going to get in these. Honestly, I haven't even looked. That's the other reason why I kind of wanted to show everyone. Because I haven't even looked to see what's in these. Um, 
Ravenclaw War Axe. Uh, Boros and a Wadden Colorless. When enemies is battlefield, you may search library for... May, may search your library. Or... And or graveyard for Ivor. Battle ready. Which is the which is the foil main card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. And then 2-0 uh, and then I have Trample. Oh, damn. Alright. And we get two of those. Sheesh. That's two. Alright. Um, detained by Legionnaires. Uh, basically a pacifism. Um, we get a couple of those. Battlefield Improvisions. Improvision? Improvision. Uh, one colorless, one white. Target creature gains plus two, plus two. Till end of turn. If that creature is attacking, you may attach any number of equipments you control to it. Two of those. Uh, Settlement Blacksmith. Two colorless and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. When enters battlefield, if you control an equipment, draw a card. All right. Three of those. Keen-Eyed Raven. Bird, two colorless, one white, two two, flyer. Uh, whenever it is bad, when it is bad, if we put a one one counter on another target creature you control. Got three of those. And then we got the head splitter. Jesus. Uh, one colorless, one red. Uh, when it is bad, if we create a one one black assassin creature token with menace, then attach head splitter to it. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. Got two of those. Uh, myth, miss, mystios. Fury. One colorless, one red. Uh, it deals uh, three damage to target creature if you control an equipment. It also deals two damage to that creature's controller. Okay. Oh, if you... Okay, so it does three damage to a creature. If you have an equipment, it deals two additional damage to the controller. All right. Three of those. Uh, Spartan... Le uh, I almost said Legionnaire. Jeez, um, Spartan Veteran. One colorless for a one... I mean, one colorless. What is going on right now? One red for a one one. Uh, while well, it's your turn, they gain first strike. Tap two to give it plus one, plus zero. That's kind of a solid card. I like that. Uh, Labyrinth Ad Adversary? Labyrinth Adversary. Three colors and a red. Minotaur, trample, four, three. Whenever you attack, you may pay one colorless, one red. When you do, target creature cannot block this turn. We got three of those. Damn, that's all for that. Um, the Bureau Headmaster. Equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast and one less to activate for Boros, and it's a 2-2. That's gross. That is gross. Uh, three stone quarries, and stone quarry is a land that comes into play tapped, and you get one or the other, one mountain or one plains. We got two hook blades, it looks like. So we got hook blades, one colorless, one white equipment. When enters battlefield, attach it to target equipment sure you control. Crypt creature gets plus one, plus zero. As long as it's your turn, the crypt creature has flying. Oh, wow, we have Ezio Brash Novice in this. All right, I did, like I said, I don't know what's in this, what's in either one of these decks. So, um, Ezio Brash Novice, uh, whenever you tax put a one-one counter on it, as long as uh, Ezio has two or more counters on it, the first, and eh, as long, okay, blah, 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 blah. as long as it has two or more counters on it, it has first strike, and it's an assassin in addition to its other types. Kind of a crazy... One towering viewpoint zero four, uh, defender with reach, gains flying until end of turn. Arbaz, all right, Arbaz is in this. Hot damn, did not realize that. Whenever Arbaz or another Taunt token historic permanent you control enters the battlefield under your control, Arbaz deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Two two for Boros. Uh, another towering viewpoint, and then we're at the pl the land section of it, and you get two assassin cards and two. Little uh, cards at the end there. So overall, an interesting deck. Very equipment-based, very equipment-heavy, kind of allowing you to go get equipments, and dealing damage, going after your opponent. I could see making a nasty equipment deck out of this uh, with Ivor herself. Arbez is kind of nice with that too, along with uh, the Bureau Headmaster. Those are kind of nasty cards for this, because I know there are uh, some equipment decks. Settlement, Blacksmith... In addition to that, uh, Raven Clan Warmaster or Raven Clan War Axe, you know. So I can see this being a fun deck. Go right after your opponent. And like I said, I can see you being able to take some cards out of this to make a, a pretty decent commander deck. Because Ivor, Vigilance, Haste, uh, three colors, uh, Boros for a 5 5. Vigilance Haste, when it attacks, it deals damage equal to the number of equipments you control to each opponent. Main word there, each opponent. So I could see if you wanted to make that into a commander deck, you really could. And it'd be kind of crazy to see just how far 
you could take a uh, commander deck with that. But with that being said, now let's get into the Demir your version of this, which is Ezio, the Blade of Vengeance. So, kind of the cool thing with this is that both of them are five cost five fives, legendary creatures, right? Legendary human assassins, right? They're two of the two of the mains. Um, Death touch. Whenever you, uh, whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, right? Um, so already Ezio off off the rip. Um, Achilles Davenport. All right, I didn't realize we were gonna get Achilles in this. Um, two colorless, Demir. 3-3 three, three, with free running. So free running is you may pass this spell for its free running cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with an assassin or commander. Interesting how they were added commander into the end of that. Uh, Menace and other assassins you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, Adatore Ambush. Two colorless Demir. Choose one or both. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Target player searches their library and or graveyard for a card named Ezio, Blade of Vengeance, reveals it, and puts it into their hand. If they search their library this way, they shuffle. Interesting card. I really feel like this only works for like a deck like this. It would be interesting to have this in a um, commander deck, but it very, very limited right here. Because if you already have it in your hand, or if it's, you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's very limited. We got two of them in this. Like I said, it makes sense for this. Uh, rooftop bypass, one colorless Demir, an enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token uh, creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with menace. Uh, tranquilize, uh, one colorless, one blue, tap target creature and opponent controls, and put three stun counters on it. And there's three of those. That's kind of an awesome card. I really like that. Hook Blade Veteran, one blue for a 1-1, one, one, and it has flying as long as it's your turn. Uh, Brotherhood Spy, one colorless, one blue, one three. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a legendary assassin, Brotherhood Spy gains plus one plus zero and cannot be blocked until end of turn. <sighs> okay. Interesting. So you're, you're paid off there if you have legendary assassins, which, let's be honest, blue, black. You're going to be able to get a lot of those if you really wanted to. Uh, Assassin Den, three colorless, one blue for a two four with Defender. Put a one one counter on a target creature you control. If can't be blocked this turn, activate only as a sorcery. I really like that. That's kind of a nice. That's a nice card. I feel like for this uh, deck, Merciless Harlequin, two colorless, one black for a two one with free running for one black and uh, one colorless. Uh, whenever in this battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. So that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Brotherhood Patriarch, three colorless, one black for four one. When pa when Brotherhood Patriarch dies, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Okay. Uh, Poison Blade Mentor, Human Assassin, Death Touch. Uh, whenever it attacks another target assassin you control, gains Death Touch until end of turn. It's two one of one colorless, one black. Okay. Brotherhood Ambushers. Oh, here's one of the big boys. So, this is the, the big hitter in this deck, it feels like. Four colorless, one black for a 6-3 with free running, three colorless, one black. You get three of those in here, too, which is kind of nice. Um, Hired Blade. It has flash, th two colorless, one black for a 3-2. Interesting having a black, uh, a black flash assassin in there. That's kind of nice. Um... Submerged Boneyard, similar to the one in the, in the other deck there. And his battlefield tapped for Demir, one of each. You get to choose. Uh, Assassin Initiate. Black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, they gain your choice of Flying, Death Touch, or Lifelink until end of turn for one. So, that's kind of nice. Uh, restart Sequence. Three colorless, one black. As free running with one colorless, one black. Return target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Kind of like that. It's a sorcery as well, so you can't just do it on your opponent's turn. But I do like that, though. It's a nice a nice bring back card. Uh, like at an end of a turn or beginning of a turn. Chain Assassination. Two colorless, two black. Free running, one colorless, one black. Destroy target creature. If another creature dies this, or died this turn, draw a card. Uh, dig that. Eagle Vision. Four colorless, one blue. One colorless, one blue. For free running, draw three cards. Um... Big for th three, but if you can free run that, that's nice. Towering viewpoint yet again. Murder, you can't have a you can't have a black deck without murder in it. And we got two of them, and then we're back to the islands and the swamps. 
with two assassin tokens and the rest of it so an interesting deck because it feels like this is this one obviously is very assassin heavy with all of the cards that are in it um but the interesting thing with it though that i thought was that some of the cards are really big on uh, allowing you to get to your opponent so you can do damage to them so you can really get Ezio working um, interesting as well no counters for a blue deck for a blue starter deck no counters no counter spells which is kind of interesting there is the tranquilize in there um, and obviously tranquilize solid card um, being able to stun your opponent and tap them out so my question is this like I asked at the very beginning of this is this a good product for a starter player, for someone new to the game of Magic, never really played Magic before, hey, you know what, I want to get into Magic, I really like Assassin's Creed. Um, I would say that this is a pretty solid product for a new player. Um, am I going to say this is the best product for a new player? Probably not. Um, but I do I do like it, I do think this is solid. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good cards to get started with. Two drastically different play styles in decks, which I think is nice. Um, so it gives them a good vision of both. Um, it was 20 bucks when I bought this. I'm not sure what the price is right now. I can take a look while I ramble. Um, but yeah, no, uh, and the other thing as well is like, so for new players, like I said, not terrible. It would be, uh, I think this would be like, if you want a buddy, you're trying to be like, hey, let's get like, hey, you kind of want to get into magic. I like Assassin's Creed. Uh, right now, this is 21 bucks on TCG players. Yes, yeah, so for 20 bucks, two solid starter decks. If you're a single person playing this, or you and a buddy want to start playing this, I would say rock it, send it. It isn't bad. Um, if you're an older player who's uh, who is into Magic or has been you know playing for a long time, is this worth 20 bucks? If you like Assassin's Creed and you want to collect this, sure. If there are some cards in here that you think would be good in a commander deck, then sure. If there's cards in this that you don't want to spend the money to buy the singles of, because I'm pretty sure the last time I looked, there may have been a single or two. Um, I want to say... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I want to say that just this Ezio card alone is more... No, this Ezio card is not more. Yes, it is. This Ezio card by itself is 11 bucks. So this is 11 bucks. This card, I think, is also around that same range. Maybe not. Um, maybe not now that I'm looking at this. Because, of course, it's not. Yeah, this card's 3 bucks. So 11 bucks, 3 bucks. So right there, just from those cards alone, it's almost the same price as this. So, uh, Rooftop Bypass is $7. That's the card you get in this. Um, so monetarily-wise... Achilles Davenport is seven bucks. That's another card you get in this. So right there, that's fourteen bucks for just two cards that aren't even the main staples in this deck alone, right? Um, and Achilles Davenport and Rooftop Bypass. These three cards alone here will are more than the entire starter kit is by itself. So with that being said, I would say yeah, definitely send this. Um, I think that the blue black deck could be better unless you're very good with equipments i feel like equipments is a tough thing to start new players into right um but it's a nice mechanic it's a nice easier mechanic to start them into than say some of the other mechanics um but my question is this what do you guys think do you guys think this is a good product for new players or not i genuinely like this like i said i think that if i was to play this with like let's say for instance me and Danute were able to play this on stream i would probably want to play the Ezio deck, we'd probably play both of them just to make it, you know, but I would want to play the Ezio deck. I think the Ezio deck is a more fun deck, where this one is more of a setup deck. But I think that this deck could be, this deck can help commanders more than this one will. So, take that for what you think. That's just my opinion. Let me know what your guys' opinions are down in the comments down below. I would love to know what you guys think, right? Um, and as always, depending on where you are, morning, after, even night, still trouble, stay safe, and we... We'll talk to y'all later. <gasps> Bye. It is interesting that they did the colors that they did. But like I said, I'm just surprised that there's not more just shock spells in this. And there's not more counter spells in this. With those being kind of staples. But then also, with the other thing is, this is like, what would they have done for a green assassin deck, right? Like, I don't think that is something. So I think these are the two best options that they went with. And I, I like it. I think, these, I think these are the best that they could have done. So... <laughs>